we welcome you this morning to St. James Presbyterian Church, and we are very glad that you are here. At this time, we invite you to find the friendship pads at the center of each aisle. Please do take the time to sign them, pass them to those seated near you, and greet your brothers and sisters in Christ following worship today. You may note that there are a few different things about our service today. There's going to be no children's message. Instead, the youth and the children will be participating in our annual Christmas play. And so the youngest children are downstairs right now becoming shepherds, and uh, the older youth are getting in costume as well. So we'll invite their participation in a short time now. Mill. Thanks, Carl. We are in need of uh, some child care uh, attendance um, for the two Christmas Eve services, one at 4.30 and one at 7.30, um, coming up soon on the 24th, as well as um, for women's, um, Presbyterian women's luncheon meetings. The one in December is on the 16th, it's a Tuesday. Usually they're on the lat uh, latter Tuesday uh, of each month, and those are from noon till two. So if any of you know of someone who might be willing to volunteer for this, we need two, of course. Uh, why, uh, do get in touch with me or with Pastor John. Um, uh, if uh, you know of someone who could use a little extra income, we, we have budgeted $10 per hour uh, for uh, this work. So, um, so give it some thought. Thanks very much. Carla. I'm just here to remind you that the angel tree has gifts to be purchased on it today for you to pick up after worship. So please remember. Thank you. One last announcement for you is that today is our annual Advent Festival. In the past, we've typically held the event in the evening which meant that folks who were here at worship would go home and spend several hours at home and then come back for the event. This year we're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to hold the event immediately following worship. So after worship, we invite you to come downstairs for lunch, for wreath making, for gingerbread houses. It should be a really fun event. And I know that uh, your participation is what makes it the kind of event that it is. Um, we have had this tradition at St. James for a number of years now, uh, a lot of people at the church look forward to this as one of their favorite events of the year, and I hope that you will come and be a part of it. At this time, we invite you to still your minds. Let us open our hearts. Let us prepare ourselves to worship God. in hand, please join me in our responsive Advent candle lighting liturgy. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. As you are able, please stand for our opening hymn.
please be seated. When we come into the holy presence of God, our own humanity is laid bare. When we stand in the living presence of truth, our own falsehood is revealed. People of God, let us acknowledge who we are and ask our ever-present God to forgive us. Please join me in our shared confession. God of the future, you are coming in power to bring all nations under your rule. We confess that we live casual lives, ignoring your promised judgment. We accept lies as truth, exploit neighbors, abuse the earth, and refuse your justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your way and to seek things that will endure when Christ comes to judge the world. Amen. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Your sins are pardoned. The penalty has been paid. Thanks be to God. Please stand. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. God sent the angel Gabriel to a virgin named Mary who lived in the town of Nazareth. Mary was engaged to a man named Joseph, who was a carpenter. The angel said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by the angel's words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. Mary was engaged to be with Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Joseph, being a righteous man, was unwilling to expose her to public disgrace and planned to dismiss her quietly instead. Just as he resolved to do so, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Mary was due to have her baby soon when they were informed that they must travel to Bethlehem, Joseph's place of birth. Mary and Joseph then embarked on the long journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph were exhausted, and no one would rent them a room as they were already filled. At last, they came across one kind innkeeper who allowed them to stay in the stable where he kept his animals. A few hours after they settled in the stable, Mary gave birth to her son and wrapped him in cloth. Do you watch? 
At the same moment, on a hillside overlooking Bethlehem, a group of shepherds was watching their sheep when a bright light appeared and down came an angel sent by God. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of Bethlehem a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in cloth in a stable. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. The shepherds set off to go and see the baby. Once they arrived at the stable, they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying at the manger in the stable. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed. Soon, far away in the east, wise men saw a new star shining in the sky. They knew that this bright star appeared because it meant a new leader had been born. So off they traveled to find this new ruler. They were guided by the star and brought the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the baby Jesus. With joy, we offer our gifts to God as a sign of our deep devotion and our covenant faithfulness. Would the ushers please come forward?
me in our unison prayer of dedication. I'll give you a moment to find your bulletin. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can give, I give him, give him my heart. Please be seated. Let us pray. Emmanuel, as we wait for your return, help us to see your glory and love through the reading of your word. We pray in your name. Amen. We have today two Old Testament readings that are often read this time of year. The first comes from Isaiah. The second is from the book of Psalms. I invite you now to hear the word of God. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her. that She has served her term. That her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double, For all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. All people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will surely stand forever. Get you up on a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Prepare. 
And from the Psalms. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned their sin. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. For God will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who Turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. The word of the Lord. Thank you, May remain seated for the singing of our next hymn.
as you may know, we have a memorial service for Bill Summers here at the church at 2 p.m. In addition, there are two other families that are not with us today and that we keep in our prayers. I went to the hospital yesterday evening to see Wally Botsford, who is in ICU. He has uh, been suffering from a number of complications in his heart this year, and apparently right now he's suffering from some sort of stomach bleed, and they are currently working on that. They have it diagnosed, and they're making progress and moving forward. He says that he's not in pain. He's glad that they know what's wrong. He knows that he's had a lot of challenges this year, but he asks that we keep him in prayer. Our prayer chain, our congregation here this morning, we invite you to lift them up. In addition to that, I went and saw Suzanne Gresham yesterday morning. Suzanne's pancreatic cancer has metastasized into her liver. Her family and physicians know that the outcome is not very positive at this point, and they've been making preparations at home for her to go peacefully and with dignity. So we invite you to lift the Gresham family up at this time. Let us turn our attention now to this important and holy sacrament. Come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more, you who have been to this sacrament often, and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed, come, it is Christ who invites us, each and every one of us, to find him here in this place right now at this feast. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and courage. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. You set us in this world to love and serve you and to live in peace with all that you have made. When we turned from you and did not, you did not turn from us. When we were captives in slavery, you delivered us to freedom and made covenant to be our sovereign God. When we were stubborn and stiff-necked, you spoke to us through the prophets who spoke in that day messages of justice and triumph and peace, and they declared that all of those things shall reign over the earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the celestial choirs with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Please join me in saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty. Blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sent him into this world to satisfy the longings of your people for a Savior, to bring freedom to the captives of sin, to establish justice for the oppressed. He came among us as one of us, taking the lot of the poor, sharing human suffering. We rejoice that in his death and rising again, you set before us the sure promise of new life, the certain hope of a heavenly home where we will sit at table with Christ as our host. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine. We joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we 
await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and the blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As the bread, this bread, is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Strengthen us, O God, in the power of your Spirit to bring good news to the poor and lift blind eyes to sight, to loose the chains that bind and claim your blessing for all people. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. On the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it, saying, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood which is for you. As often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time that you eat of this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Friends, these are the gifts of God for all the people of God. I invite the communion servers to now come forward. It is the tradition of this worshiping community to first begin serving those who are seated at the back of the sanctuary. So when all of the elements have been distributed, I invite those of you at the back to please come forward. We serve communion here by intinction. You take a piece of bread, dip it into the cup. All of the bread is gluten-free. All of the cups contain grape juice. All things are now ready. assistance during communion today, you're not able to come forward, please raise your hand. Gretchen will come around to you with the bread and the cup.
please find your bulletins and let us share together in our unison prayer following communion. Lord God, in deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. So, Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of the commonwealth of heaven. Amen. Together, let us offer the words of the Lord's prayer as printed in our bulletin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As you are able, please stand with hymn book in hand for the singing of our closing hymn. children for leading us in worship today. I invite you as we leave this place to remember that we have the Advent Festival downstairs. Lunch is a part of that immediately following worship today. And I invite you as you go to receive this blessing. In accordance with God's promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share signs of God's peace. Peace.